Hey guys and welcome to Void of Dust Gaming, your channel for fresh Arena of Valor content. Today I have a hero that I don't really play that much. I have 8 games with him and my win rate is underwhelming with only 37.5%. I'm talking about Zip, a hero who is said to be really strong, but I wasn't able to pull off any of his shenanigans. Um, I have seen Zips dominating the game, tanking every single thing and just pushing everything to the win. But unfortunately, Zip and I don't have this connection. This video is different. Um, I somehow was able to tank 27% of the total damage incoming to my team. And I think I have just played the best game that I have recorded with him so far. So this is the eighth and the best game that you're going to see right after the build. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button, put on the notification and become one of the Void of Dusk followers on my way to 1000 subscribers. And if you like the video or if you have any advice for me to make the zip even better, you are free to use the comment section. Enjoy the video. So here I am with my item build. As you can see, this is a pretty standard support build. We are going full tank. We're trying to put on some utility as well with the Aegis as well as the Shield of the Lost, which reduces the attack speed of nearby enemies by 30% and the rest is built around us. We want to stay in the fight as long as possible. And therefore we have in the support item some boots, the Gilded Griefs for the additional cooldown uh, CC reduction, not the cooldown reduction, but the crowd control reduction. And that is going to be something that we are using in our enchantments as well. But let's talk about Arcana first. I want to have max HP with a uh, utility boost in movement speed and cooldown speed. That means we are using Violate just to get some damage in because otherwise we are not harming the enemy in any kind of way. We're not the damage dealer but we want to do at least something. We've got Benevolence for the HP and the movement speed as well as some welcome HP regeneration. And I'm having Valence for the HP and the cooldown speed. That's at least 6% cooldown reduction and that's gonna help us to get our curse out there into the enemies. Um, enchantment wise, I have set the build on Afata and there we're using the River Treater for the uh, regeneration of mana and health as well as the Nature's Gift that gives us some nice HP. Um, healing is not really recommended because we don't have a healing and we're not using the shield stuff too much. Could proc with the shield, but I'm not entirely sure if that's gonna help your um, teammates as well. So I've taken the nature's gift and I'm using the rage to get some percentage uh, damage out that's uh, calculated from the max HP that the enemy has. And in the second tree, you can see that we're losing Lockheim and we are going with utility. So I'm having the Debarra for the HP and mana restoration and I'm using the bone cutter for an additional 10% of resistance that's gonna stack nicely with our boots. So that is the build. Let's see some gameplay. And here we go. Um, as you can see, I have chosen the braces for the build, but as we are up against Tulan, as well as Butterfly, I have opted for the shield. So I have changed the support item to our little shield boost. And um, I've taken the zip curse, the first ability, as my first ability to go for and the first ability that I want to max. Um, I think zip is pretty much all about roaming. Um, I don't think it's of any use if you stick to your AD carry and stay with him for all game long Because what's gonna happen? You will just help him But you are much more versatile and you are a really great addition for setting up team fights because you can snare enemies You can just lock them into position as I have done here with my curse um, could have gone in to get some uh, melee damage on him 
but it's not necessary because we just want to frighten him off so that we can take the minion wave without any harm. And now I'm going to roam back into the middle. So I'm trying to get my stuff on Grok. But unfortunately, the range is not that long. Like, uh, I have underestimated the range in this game a couple of times. But it doesn't really matter because the game went, went on fairly well. So there's a massive team fight in the middle. I'm coming from the side, uh, trying to get some spells into the enemies here again. And uh, wow, that was a lot of damage. Um, Lavila is able to just get berries here. I'm missing my spell again. That's that would have been crucial. Like if I would have hit that, that would have been actually quite beneficial for the team fight. But as I have already accomplished the first upgrade of my support item now i'm going with the boots so that i can roam a little bit faster i don't know if that's like the tactic to go for with zip but it just felt uh quite naturally to go for the boots after i've got the first item and i will continue to get this item after i have finished the second upgrade of the boots so that i can wear the gilded greaves I mean, being faster and having um, control effect reduction doesn't seem like a bad thing to do. Um, I guess I could go in here and use my ability to get increased damage on my melee attacks. But I'm a little bit scared of Grok because he just has the crazy ability to um, soak in stuff, do damage. And therefore, I just wanted to not be too close to him before he uses his ult. Uh, we're able to defend against the butterfly. I'm landing another hit here. So it's just like that ability is just so strong. Like just for this very one ability, it's kind of super cool to use zip. I'm kind of trying my ult here. I thought it might just be a good idea. Soaking in uh, the Azenkar, snaring the Laville in the very right moment. Like, um, that just helped to stop Grok in his tracks. And now we are off to get the tower. Grok tries to defend here. Um, I'm getting my teammates in. Sucking me in, sucking me in. And that was a bad decision. Like, I, I see right now, uh, after re-watching the video, and I, I excuse myself for this because it was it was not the way that I planned it. And that's the problem with the... With the soaking in ability, it can just be the best thing to do in the very moment or it can be the worst thing. And this was a perfect example of how not and how not to use it and a moment where you should not use it at all. Uh, it was just being a little bit stupid. So I'm going with the mana first here. That was kind of a misclick. I just wanted to. Uh, upgrade my item first but I mean the mana is pretty much welcome so that you can use your items even more often so that should not be that much of a bummer uh, again setting up here my setting up here my stuff Azenka is doing a great job like the Azenka will be the MVP and that's granted like he was doing such a great job dealing so much damage to everything um, I'm using my S2 here to become a little bit faster and to move out without being killed. Mm, and now I'm just trying to poke him. I know that if he lands a shot, we will both be dead. But now I'm giving both of us a shield, or especially the Azenkar, so that we can defend the tower uh, because that's quite important. Like middle tower is important. You want that tower to stand as long as possible in the game because it's one of the most important lanes because the ways are just shorter if you want to push through mid lane and some of the games are accomplished by pushing through mid lane unfortunately we're not able to defend it even after we kind of we nearly died here so that was bad that was really bad that was really really bad Good thing for us is that the enemy is kind of dividing themselves all the time. So we do get an approach here. I uh, need to be careful because 
I'm eating all the damage that Tulin is spitting out. But the good thing is, like, if he is focusing me, he's not focusing any of the damage dealers. That means that Wukong and Laville can roam freely. And now I'm on my way to the top lane to protect Azankar, or try, try to protect him, and try to protect the tower. Again, the range of this spell isn't fabulous. Like, it's not, it's not something that's going to work super well. And I'm just dying here, like, to the passive of Tulin. Of course, I'm not invincible when I'm rolling around. It was just a bad attempt of trying to save the tower. But as I have finished my item here, I'm able to get into other items. Good Raz, like that was, that was actually quite keen, but he is no match for Tulin and the combined forces of Yorn and everyone else. And I, we have just questioned what Wukong was actually doing right now. Mm. That call was just a misclick, like of course, we should not focus or pay attention to the enemy sage at any time at the moment. And I think Rog makes the wrong move getting to the side. And now we're able to finish him off quite easily. Uh, interrupting his ultimate is actually something really nice. And there's a butterfly. And she sees the damage and she feels like, well, I can't do this. Um, I'm soaking in my boy Azankar, um, putting him to the side. And I think that was actually not that bad. Like uh, he survived and now we are able to get back into the game. And because I was hitting a minion, I was able to put my curse on uh, Varys using my heal ability here to get my team back to life. Even one third is enough to make Azenkar run for president and uh, right now we've got the upper hand like we're doing so much damage it's incredible and we do get a lot of AoE damage and I don't know what this tool was doing like I think he gave up at this this very moment of the game um, pretty unfortunate for a team to have someone who's kind of throwing the game um, I'm rolling around on the uh, butterfly did not help us to win everything but at least we got something back. Now I'm taking my team back to town and we are able to get Varus with giving shields to two of my fellow players. Quite strong, like you can just tell how much I survived. Um, right now I have been participating in at least more than half of the kills and I'm still doing well, like uh, I've got two bars from my health bar, and now I'm riding them up again. I think Zill is super potent. It's just another kind of play style, and that's what makes it difficult to learn for newbies like I am. Uh, it's just kind of really strange on when to soak up. Will your teammates get what you're about to do? But then the cool thing is like, you can just press a button and exit that state. Like you, no one forces you to be in that kind of thing. And I just interrupted, I just interrupted his stuff. Again, protecting Azenkar. We're killing the team. Azenkar is able to make it out of life. Otherwise he might just be dead. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about this, but it just felt the way that he would have died to the incoming impact from all the enemy attacks and now we have the opportunity to get into a easy peasy tower healing up my team as i'm support that's my duty um i get riled in here and i don't want to stay in grog's range for too long so i make my way out rolling out as a little chicken ball team was really upset with the yawn performance um, the enemy team, like he wasn't AF, like he was AFK sometimes, and then he wasn't AFK. So I don't really know what the deal about that was. Um, maybe they would have fight a little bit better, but then we are on a fifteen uh, kills for them and only fourteen kills for us. So they have the lead, but we are better at pushing towers. As you can tell, we already pushed down the whole middle lane. I would rather. Uh, I would rather be a little bit worried about what Tulin is doing right here. Because that wasn't the, the brightest move, getting into the jungle and then 
trying to get someone from us. I don't know what that was. So I am close on building a complete male of pain. That's gonna be beneficial in the team fights even further. I'm rolling around here. Uh, I can't help, but the shutdown is here. And again, soaking stuff in is a threat. And now Azankar and Raz have enough power to finish off the enemies quite easily. Pretty nice performance of both of these guys. And uh, now they are up against Tulin. Tulin is dead. And now Varys has to meet her maker. She's dead as well because Tulin and Azenkar, the combination of pure force and a lot of crowd control, just saved the day. Impressive. Like I wasn't thinking that Azenkar was actually that good. But if you give him some support, he is actually able to make really nice, sorry, really nice plays and take the game into his own hands. Does he have hands? I don't know. He kind of looks like some kind of desert ghost or mummy or something. So not entirely sure about his physical appearance here. Mm. So you can see how dominant we are in the game um, from the whole setup that we now have Dark Slayer. And we just managed to finish off the second tower. So it's only one tower between us and the core, which should tell you something. Um, again, I'm soaking up Azenkar and I'm reeling in here. Butterfly removes herself. Uh, I think that was a mistake. She could have just forced more damage into us because now we are able to get Varys because of the combined forces of Laville and Wukong. Uh, Dragon is set up really nicely, like that was a really good thing to do, to put him in the one and only lane where we haven't really got the tower. Um, Tulin dashes out, but that's not really a match for us, like we now have the last single tower, now we have super minions deployed down the mid lane, and as I said, mid lane is one of the most important things that you want to accomplish, like you want to push through here easily, and now we've got super minions, so even if we would not have been able to end the game right now, it would have been quite brutal for the enemy, because that means just three heavy minions walking up to your front door and knocking with knuckle fists. So yeah, that was like the best zip game that I was ever playing. And I was seeing an Azenkar with 32.6% damage in the whole game. Like that was something that was surprising as well. So thumbs up for both of these guys. The rest was not too intimidating. And uh, 1318, that's the curse of the supports. You die. Not that often, but you're not rated MVP. It's just the way it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Remember to subscribe and enjoy your playtime in Arena Valor. Bye-bye.